Welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name is Jeff. I'm the borough manager of Mount Pleasant. And sitting next to me... Jerry Lucia, mayor of Mount Pleasant. And sitting next to him... Rick Fike. I'm the producer of local programming for the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. What you're watching right now. You do a fine job. And you do. And what a nice day today to do a show. It's beautiful. It was a good idea to come out here. It was a good idea. And that was Rick's idea. (laughs) So uh, just so he gets the credit. If anybody out there ever works in TV... The easiest thing to do is film outside. Is you film- know why? Because the lighting is always perfect. Is that right? Yeah. How, how about the noise and other things like that? Nah, these but- microphones. These are good microphones. Oh. Armstrong spares no expense on getting us the best microphones. On the and neighborhood the channel. Clothing. On the neighborhood channel. That's and, right. And, uh, and, and so, you know, these, uh, these microphones pick up really, really good. That's why you got to have it right on you. Oh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> you were right 100% in Armstrong. <laughs> They buy good shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, gentlemen, I think uh, today's show, as we want to let the public know, because usually when you're involved, Rick, we let the, it's like an information show about some of the things we have coming up and some of the things we're doing. So I th- would think the first thing that we should talk about is our July 3rd party in the park. That's right. And, Rick, you've been a part of that. Many times, but I know you're skipping this year. Yeah, sadly, I won't be here this year. I'm, I'm going to be at my camp this year. I'm spending the whole 4th of July weekend up there. I haven't got to do that in years. Yeah, and I thought so. we were going to have you and your fiance actually dancing. Uh, one of the, like, nobody else is allowed to dance, but they have you two dancing here. Oh, I like thought a, that was scheduled. Like a slow dance. Like a slow thing. dance. Oh, like yeah. Almost like a wedding. Well, you know yeah. what I mean? When they first dance, like a wedding. Maybe next year. It could wait till <laughs> September. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to, well, since he, yeah, we'll have to do that in September. Class festival. Yep. So that's going to be, I know people are going to be disappointed because they were expecting that, but that's okay. We'll, hey, we'll reschedule that. Listen, what is more exciting about having an event after the year, year and a half that we've had with the pandemic and everything being closed to now it's just like, hey, let's let's do this. Let's have fun. The Andy Davis band's going to be here, and I'm giving away all the spoilers. No, that's fine. Keep going. I think but, you're doing a fine job. But, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a really really fun time, and and really, Jeff. I mean, we're inviting the public to come out, right, and enjoy. Correct. We are, and I we do ours on July 3rd, and uh, we also shoot the fireworks that for the party in the park. But um, Rick, Rick, what do you like? You've been to several of them. You filmed them. Yeah. What did you like best about the party in the park? I tell you, I like um, I like how it's not a daytime event, but okay. I like how it's kind of more in the evening to when it's cooling off during the day. There's vendors all across the road. So we're sitting actually at the gazebo right now, and, um, and, and right over here in front of us is, uh, this is Diamond Street, and it's lined with vendors, and there's people, and everybody puts their chairs here. And my favorite part, though, is just kind of how as the sun sets, you know, the band keeps playing, and uh, and then fireworks come later. And it's a little different vibe it is. than some of the other events that happen because it is. It's, it is a party. It is. It really is a party. It's a celebration. And I think this year is going to be one of the biggest. I mean, yeah. we're making it because last did, did we have party in the park last year? I'm trying no. to remember. I didn't think so. No. It was a tough decision. But, you know, if you remember, last year... That whole pandemic started hitting big time in March yes. and April. And really, July was a lot of still unknown, yeah. you know, how to do things. Right. And so right. that was that. The Fireman's Fair in June was canceled. Um, and so so was July 3rd. And so was the rest of the year almost, except till we got to the Halloween parade. Which yeah. We ended up doing the Halloween parade. But, um, yeah, Jerry, what do you like best about the party in the park? Well, the party in the park, it, it brings a lot of people out. That uh, It's really nice. We do a fireworks. And also there's going to be probably two fireworks ten, uh, that night. Uh, I understand there's going to be some in the township too. And um, it, the, seeing the people having a good time. And, and I've never saw a 4th of July. Well, it's the 3rd of July this year. But I've never saw a, a celebration in town here at the gazebo that people really were having fun. They had fun. They had fun. They and interact with each other. They have fun. There's always a food tent over here. There's, a, again, all the vendors. It's great. And the kids. I'm surprised how many young kids just have fun. 
yeah. and dancing around and the parents dancing with them. It is a different atmosphere. The little ones come up front here and you know, dance around yeah. with the music. And they even bring them up on stage. Uh, uh, yeah. And let them perform. And that's, that's what it's about. Community and support and just people gathering together and neighbor. The neighborly uh, features come out. And Mount Pleasant's definitely special. I mean, when you come here, this 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 community square here. I mean, right now, the phone's that, ringing again it, off the hook. It about is, the, it about is. The, uh, to talk about party in the park. <laughs> the bands are trying to get booked. We're booked. People want to know sorry. when it starts. <laughs> it's, it starts at what time does it start? It, it starts Seven, this right? one. It starts at six. Oh, six. Vendors will be open because I think people want to come a little bit, get their place to sit. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can have their supper before yeah. the band starts. Sure. So we're going to start at six this year. What kind of food vendors will be here? We have hot sausage, okay. funnel cake. Is that Almers? That's it'll be Almers. Okay. We have funnel cake. We have um, we have cupcakes, a gourmet cupcakes. We have who's doing the popcorn. cupcakes? Um, I'll have to put you on Cheryl the Cheryl Begonia. Oh, oh, okay. And she did them yes. a couple of years ago when yeah. we did it. Yeah. And it was a good hit. Yeah. Uh, and I also think she does pepperoni rolls too. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah she's very good. So um, she's coming again. We have popcorn, candy, cotton things for the kids. And I'll tell you what else we have up here that we don't talk about a lot is we have a fountain. And the fountain, kids like to go and you know splash around a little bit splash, in the water. Yeah. And um, it's kind of it's kind of fun to see that, and that sits right next to the gazebo. So we talk a little bit. We forget that a little bit that we have that. Um, people get a chance to look at the wall when they're up here, because yeah. um, you know July Fourth in July that area. That's you know that's the birth of our country, and we had a lot of people fight for that for that country birth. In this event, it's all ages, right, Jeff? It is really all ages. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see people from two years old up to 90 years old that are down here that yeah. night. And the band this year is a different band. Um, we, had, we had several bands in the very beginning each year. Mm -hmm. And then we booked Switch one year, and the crowd doubled for mm -hmm. Switch, okay? And then, so you hate, to, you, know, you hate to not do something that's working. So the next year we had switch again and the crowd got bigger and then the next year the crowd got bigger and so we kept switch until this year they um, I don't think they're going to perform this year um, at all. So I had to get uh, I had to look for another band. Well, it's easy to look for a band in your hometown. Andy Davis, who uh, is, has a, is a, a good reputation. A lot of people know him. Uh, and a growing reputation. He's from Mount Pleasant, so we contacted him. He was thrilled to do it because it's his hometown, and he has a song called Hometown. So he's going to perform this year. So I expect possibly the crowd could be even bigger because it hasn't been here for a couple years. We have a new band. A lot of people know him. and uh, We discussed uh, actually expanding the audience the, right. the, the place for the right, audience we're gonna use the, the parking lot for people to sit also so now and so it won't be so congested on the street we'll actually be able to we, have people yeah you're spreading walk it out there a little bit and um the fireworks will be approximately 10 approximately 10 o'clock uh after the band's done playing the band should be done playing right at 10 and we'll start the fireworks right then sounds like a great night It'll be fun. I'm good for the fireworks. Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, we do. We try. And, I, and I'll tell you what else we do different here. Um, we sing "God Bless America," mm -hmm. and we sometimes sing it. The crowd sings it. Like, whereas one couple of times we had young women do a nice job singing, but I've always thought it was better to have the whole crowd actually sing the song. It kind of felt a little differently too. It comes from their heart. It does. And so I think we're going to this year, anybody who comes, ask them, you know, we're going to have them sing with everybody else. Well, uh, we're God bless. We're giving them a chance to practice at home. We are. Yeah. We're letting them know. Uh, if you're coming, right. make sure you know the song. That's right. Um, and one more thing about people. Jerry, we walked around and did the show mm -hmm. several times. Rick, you filmed it. 
there's people from all over. Yeah. We I, I thought Party in the Park would be, you know, maybe Mount Pleasant and then surrounding a little bit. But you got people from Manesson, New Kensington, uh, people Bird, Green. Bird. I never thought would come here for July 3rd, mm-hmm. but they do. They do for this, and I'm I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's a, it's it really is a great event. Um, I, I know there was some it was was Dwayne Dwayne the Rock Johnson coming again this year. Or? He, he he said he was coming. He as we were getting ready for the show, I got a message from his manager. Oh, okay. He probably. He probably won't be here, but he'll try. Okay. That's we'll we we'll know. We are, we're going to know if his, you know, if he, if his limousine pulls up, we'll know. That's right. That's you know? right. That's right. But that's how it is with those big celebrities. Well, it was you great know? that year he was here, and, and he couldn't explain how much he loved the Jeff and Jerry he, show. He did. He loved it. And he said, you know, he said we could always invite him back. Yeah. Well, you I'm know? surprised. You know, you're going to miss all this fun. I know. I'm, I'm actually really. really uh, I'm hurt because you're a part of the. Our, <laughs> well, he, he, our really you know? he really is. He really is. No. It'd be like you taking off the day. Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> no. So. Yeah, I'm thinking about. I mean, I might have to re- redo my plans. So that we can, <laughs> because you know, it, if we here. can't get Rock uh, Johnson here, the Rock, we could. It could be you. <laughs> right. Right. You know, Rick. Rick he's, the Rock. Rick the Rock of Armstrong. <laughs> Rick the Rock. You're the Rock of Armstrong. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, so that's about the July 3rd event. The other thing that we want to talk a little bit about is, uh, your, and I, I think I did mention it in the past, uh, the gazebo. We're going to actually refurbish the gazebo. Uh, we have the plans done. Um, we'll probably start construction sometime in july and uh for now we decorated the gazebo in in the red white and blue colors and i think uh we'll leave those up uh, as we do the renovations but that's going to be something that i think and with this when when we're done this place will look um not a lot different but it'll, it'll look different so there's actually construction being done Jeff? there will well we we had to do a little bit of exploratory things here but there will be construction when the project starts. And uh, like I said, this thing will be, it'll be different than what you see today. And, and you know, the, the gazebo was, while well, the first gazebo was put up, then it was revitalized, I believe, in the uh, mid 80s. No, no, it would be mid 90s. So it's almost 30 years old. So it needs, uh, it, it was time for it. Yeah, it was time. And, and, you know, usually we try to update stuff. Um, this is such a big project, though, that we had to make sure we had the funds uh, to do it. And we want to do it right. So that's why you, sometimes you wait a little longer than you should. But um, I think people will enjoy it that night. It'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll be lit up with all the red, white, and blue banners. The other project I, people are talking about is the uh, waterway project and the waterway project for those uh, are in town and surrounding the area is the Shoops Run that runs uh, in Mount Pleasant uh, down where uh, Cook's Lumber used to be and down where American Architectural Salvage is currently. So we cleaned that whole banks up and it's all been cleared we did a little bit of uh, concrete work and put up a fence and put a little walkway in, uh, did some curbing down there. So next, uh, we're waiting on the new light poles, benches, and uh, uh, trash containers to come in. And we're going to be planting flowers along the bank, and we're going to be doing some other things down there. So the project, although it looks good, is uh, probably only 60% done. Uh, now it's going to be the fun stuff, the new decorative poles and the new benches and things that, that look good. So for those who are waiting for that project or think it's done, it's not done. And it will be done throughout the summer. We should have it done as the stuff comes in. Sounds really good. Yeah, that's, that's a nice project that we did, and we were able to do it quickly. Um, the other project uh, that we... Uh, that we're looking at is we're looking at doing some more lighting on our main street and around Memorial Square, which is the diamond. Uh, so you'll see, we're applying for a grant now for that. 
hopefully we'll get it and we're going to do some more things around the Doughboy area. Uh, we're also going to look at getting a new pump for the fountain. So this pump will do, it'll do a new lighting effect, plus it'll go up and down. You can program it to do like a little, maybe a music dance okay. thing. Okay. And speaking of music, um, we've been working on uh, music on Main Street for at least three or four years. That project, we have the funding now for that project, and so that will be a project whether we do it this year or next year, but we'll have that music up and down Main Street. That's like that some speakers. Be nice on holidays, you know, like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, you have well, a music plan. I'll, I'll give you a good example. We want to congratulate the girls, high school girls softball for winning the uh, PIAA. And mentioning that, you know, uh, we had a nice night uh, there when they came back from uh, the, uh, the, t the tournament, and they, they were state champions, and uh, they're going to be in our, our parade this week. Uh, for the Fireman's Fair. Yeah, for the well, Fireman's Fair. Last week. Well, it'll be Same that, yeah. yeah, right. But, um, but and you, you <laughs> should, you know, listen, you're the one who organized those, that, little, uh, that little gathering. Uh, it's all, not a parade. It's not a parade. We had a little gathering. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a parade. But it was a gathering. And yeah. you, did, you, you organized that, and it would have been nice, though, to have the music on Main Street playing as the oh girls come God, down. Yeah, See, that's the yeah, whole purpose that of that. Really good. And it would have been another highlight. Uh, but we'll have it. it it's, we've been working on it for a while. Um, that's the projects that I wanted to update everybody on. I think the other thing we want to talk about a little bit, Jerry and Rick, is uh, permits. I think people forget or they're busy. Um, there's certain permits that are required by the state uh, pool and by the borough, uh, swimming pools. Swimming pools are big right now. With, with, with COVID, everybody stayed home, didn't go on vacation. They were able to save some money and put swimming pools in. And, he, and he's putting a lot of swimming pools in this year. Uh, so you don't forget you need a permit for a swimming pool. And there's state requirements for the height of the fence that goes around them. There's uh, requirements for the electric that goes to the swimming pool. And they're all safety requirements. And you know all about safety. And you know, another thing is when you drain your pool or any other, any water that's, once it's in the pool and it has to be discharged, it's got to go into the sanitary sewer. Not that's correct. The street. Not in the catch basins on the street, not just down the street, it has to go into the sewage. You're right. Um, um, Rick, do you have any questions on permitting, uh, how it works? So, so say, I, let's start from the beginning. How do I apply for a permit? You first would call the borough. Okay. And what we do at the borough is we provide the zoning permit. And the zoning permit is the permit that says what you're having is it permitted in your area and how far away from your from your property line are you able to put a structure so if it's the pool and you live in a zone that says it has to stay 10 feet away then you draw a map you record that and then we issue the permit for that pool okay the next step would be then to call the building inspector because believe it or not, pools fall under building inspections. So they would call, I would give him the phone number and they would then call the building inspector and he'd do the inspection of the pool to make sure it's safe. He'd do the inspection of the electric. And it's, it's, the process is simple if you go step by step and follow it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some people probably just get excited, they make their purchase, then they start putting a pool up. And they don't and think about it. I bet people don't even think about the fact that they need a permit yeah. to do that. Well, I know, and we try to remind people as much as we can, because it's easier to do it in the beginning than to do it halfway through the middle of it when you have to make changes. Right. And nobody wants to do that. Yeah, there's also some uh, work being done now on houses that need actually attended to uh, because um, they're they're falling apart or they're really getting dilapidated and what we want to do is uh, 
we, we're looking at uh, some of the houses, some of the properties will be uh, uh, condemned. And uh, we're, gonna, we're really starting to go that direction to have the uh, house. There's several houses that are actually leaning over towards the, their neighbors. And um, well, the windstorm the other day, we had a chimney blow off a house. Wow. No one's lived in that house for 10 years. Right. Well, I think that's a good point. And uh, those houses, you know, fall under the blighted properties. Yes. Every borough has them. I think, fortunately, we don't have a lot here. But the ones we have here, uh, the ones we're down to, I should say, because we, we have a zone, we have a, um, an inspector, who, a code enforcement officer. He goes around. The ones we're down to are the ones that the family hasn't been there for 10 years. You can't find the family. Um, the bank owns the property. Uh, they're hard to deal with. Have you ever dealt with a bank? We may be calling Oklahoma and, and talking yeah. to the person holding the mortgage. I right. mean, the mortgage it, it that way. it's not easy. And so you make a phone call, then they say they'll get back to you. Then it's another person gets back to you. So it's difficult. We're down to the difficult ones. And I know those are the ones that are the worst for people, for neighbors. But they're, they're the most difficult to deal with. I think what people don't understand is we have to follow the law. The borough is not above the law. So if we condemn, like Jerry said, the first thing we have to do is we have to get an engineer to come in, in which we have an engineer, a building inspecting engineer. He has to come in and say, yeah, that, that house needs condemned. If he says no, then we, our hands are tied. Hmm. I, I can't condemn a building. Right. So we have to wait for him to come in, him to condemn it. Once he condemns it, then all that means is the house is condemned. But to get it torn down, you have to go to the courts. Okay. To get somebody to allow you to tear it down. Let's just say they do find a niece that lives up in New York. They have to give permission for you to tear it down. So the process takes a long time and people will get I would be the same because they see it every day. But you can't rush the process. It, it just takes time. We just can't go in there. We can't even enter the property. Wow. So I know a lot of people don't understand that. I had a meeting the other day with some people, and they just don't understand. And I just, I just keep saying the borough is not above the law. You know? Well, that's why you have rules and regulations and... You know, when you're dealing with so many different functions, I mean, factions, I meant to say, you have the property owner that was there, you have the bank that's holding the, the mortgage, and you have the neighbors that really are upset. And we, we uh, honor the neighbor's request. I mean, we try to help it as fast as we can. And, and I'll give you another one. Taxes owed. Yeah. Some of these properties, well, there was a property in town one time. I think it was valued at 50000 There was $100,000 owed on the mortgage. And there were taxes owed of 10000 So nobody forgave those taxes. I'm talking the county. I'm talking school district. You know, obviously the borough is the smallest portion of your taxes that you pay, the property tax. We're the smallest. We would have forgave it right away. But if they don't, then we have to wait for the judge to say, okay, I'm going to wipe those taxes out. Wow. And that could be four or five years. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is a big headache for, for any borough to deal with. We got about five minutes left. Well, is there anything, Rick, that you want to mention, or Jerry? I, I want to put a. Uh, it's it's a plug for the Laurelville camp, but it's also information to our citizens that there is a beautiful swimming pool at the Laurelville camp, and if they want to take their children to a pool, because I mean they person don't have one in their backyard uh, 
the Laurelville uh, camp is one fantastic swimming pool to go to. It's brand new. It was built uh, last year, year two, before. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. And they, they are so friendly to everybody oh. that comes out there. And they have a lifeguard. Oh, yeah. And they, ha they have a lot of little features that you other pools don't have. They you have miniature golf. golf. It's a neat place. And it's open to the public. Yeah. Uh -huh. Rick, you've been there many times. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's great. It, we love it. We love going up there. And, and uh, even just to go up and walk around, you go up to the, the prayer uh, labyrinth at the top. Yep. I, I mean, it's, it's, yep. it's Sunset Hill or whatever. The, you yeah. Know, it's, yeah, it's nice. We have. It's the best kept secret in this area. And it's we have. This. Listen, we have many of those. I mean, real quick, we have lots of wineries in our area mm -hmm. that you can go to on Sundays. Yep. That's why we don't do concerts in a park on Sunday. Yeah. Everybody goes to a winery, and who wouldn't? Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So we just don't do them here anymore. Right. Um, they're a nice little little uh, attraction for our area. Um, well, we have a lot to do. There's a lot to do. And things, again, are opening. So it's, it's oh things are opening up. Things are becoming normal. And it's great. Yeah. Did you get your shots? <laughs> no. If you're going to ask, I'm going to answer. No. <laughs> you can ask me every week if you want. The answer will be no. Uh, I think I do every week. I think you do. <laughs> well, on that note... <laughs> We have about two minutes. Um, I guess, we're, well, the fire is fair. It'll be over by the time we talk about this. So I guess that's about it. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful day. Enjoy this great community. And we've had good weather, too, recently. We so We've really been blessed. Okay. I, I want to call another compliment real quick. Frick Park, uh, you know, since we uh, upgraded the equipment in there, uh, it really looks good, and it's a safe park to, to really participate in. If you have your little kids, uh, that's a place to go, Frick Park. And we have a park program. Mm -hmm. For those people who live here or surrounding area, Monday through Thursday, and I believe it starts at 11, you bring your children up, and uh, YMCA, actually, yeah. they run it for us. Excellent. So, Lots to do. Okay. Well, gentlemen, it's time to wrap up the show. So, I hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you again learn a little bit more every time you watch the show or listen to it. So, for Rick and Jerry and Jeff, thanks for watching and listening to the Jeff and Jerry show, and we'll see you next time.